Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Winstead, and in this video I'm going to be modeling this fifth part here for On Shape, our more advanced models. There are probably multiple ways to do this that are correct, so don't get hung up on just one. My way is not necessarily the best um, or the worst, but I'll, I'll show you whatever I come up with. So for this one, I'm going to change things up a little bit before I normally do extrusions for cylinders, but I'm going to show you guys how to do a revolve just for funsies. Uh, so start a sketch on the front plane, switch a ruski there. All right. When you do a revolve, you need two things. You need an axis around which to revolve, which I'm actually going to use the Y axis here. I'm just going to put a line here. Um, I don't even care how long it is. It doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm going to be putting a rectangular shape that will revolve around the line to turn that into a cylinder. So I'm going to be modeling that. Uh, just so you guys are aware, uh, this one does say it's in millimeters. If you want to change to millimeters, you would go to the three bars here and click workspace units. Uh, by default, it's usually in inches, but for this one, millimeters works a little bit better. Just so you know. All right, uh, I'm out of my sketch. So anytime you like click out of your sketch and do something else, it's always gonna be here. So just double click on it and you can come back to it. Don't make a new sketch. That's, that's a rookie mistake. All right, so this rectangular shape that I'm going to use for my revolve is going to be half of this diameter and then it's going to have this height. So I'm going to start my rectangle. Half of 40 is 20, but I'm going to make the computer do the math for me because who has time for that? Not me. 40 divided by 2, you can do that, thank you. And uh, the height would be the 30 millimeters that's listed over here. Type my 30, hit enter. There we go. All right, and that's all I need for that sketch. Now I'm gonna go back out and use the revolve command. So with revolve, you pick something to revolve, which is that, and then you click where it says revolve axis and click that center line that I made. And look at that, it makes a cylinder for me. Ta-da! You can use a revolve to make all kinds of things, cylinders, cones, um, even spheres. It's totally, totally a lot of options. It's very fun. So always good to try out new things. Now I'm going to make this part that's at the top. So I'm going to start a new sketch on top of this cylinder. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And I'm just going to make like a square. I'm going to start the square down here in the lower left corner and come up to somewhere in the upper right hand quadrant. And uh, I'm going to type in, it's going to be 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. So I'm going to type in 10, enter, 10, enter. All right. Now it looks pretty good, except that it's off center. So I'm going to make a line right along the y-axis. I don't care how long it is. I just want it to go through the whole square. I'm going to escape from that. Same thing, x-axis. Don't care how long it is. It's just there as a reference. And I'm going to use this symmetric tool. Symmetric is one of the many different sketch constraints that you can use. Symmetric is a handy one. I'm going to take this outside edge and this outside edge, and I'm going to make them symmetric around this center line. And for some reason it's not populating, so try it again. Line, line, center. And then you notice how it shifted just barely. I click off of symmetric and back on. Line, line, and now this center. That one didn't move hardly at all, so it was probably pretty close to center. But now I've confirmed that it is centered, and that's all I needed. The last thing I want to do before I extrude is cut out these, like, middle lines, because otherwise they're going to make my extrusion kind of weird. So I'm going to pick Trim here under... It's hidden under the fillet in the sketch mode. And I'm just going to cut these lines. 
There we go. These lines don't matter. The extrusion won't even see them. So I'm good to go. Now I'm going to extrude this 15 according to that. So not 25. No thanks. Okay. Pretty nifty. So now I have a cylinder with a square thing poking out. I just need to round off these edges, which I'm going to use a fillet to do. And then down here we have a chamfer, 30 degrees and five. So I'll show you how to do both. So for the fillet, let's zoom in a little bit. I only want to fill it. I don't want to fill it the face. I just want to fill it this lower edge. So you see how it kind of rolls out. It is a radius of five. So that's correct. I'm going to do the same thing with this edge. And then I'm going to click my little corner here to flip around. I'm going to do the same thing with this edge. Click one more corner, flip around, and same thing with the last edge. Hit that OK, and there we go. Nice and filleted. Look how pretty that is. All right, my last step is going to be to chamfer. Chamfer is actually in the same part of the menu as fillet. Click that chamfer. And it starts, like, it automatically does equal distance. I don't want that one, though, because you see how I have, like, a distance and an angle? That's the one I want, is a distance and an angle. So I'm going to change the distance is fine, but the angle has to be changed to 30. And then I'm going to click this lower circle, and that will chamfer it for me. And that's it. That's, that's the whole thing. That is shape number five in all of its lovely glory. So give it a try. It's a good chance to practice and play around with fillet, chamfer, and revolve. So play around with it. Have fun.